Welcome to an exciting journey through Scotland's genetic history. Today, we'll uncover the waves of migrations and settlements that have left a lasting imprint on Scottish DNA over the millennia. Scotland's heritage is as rugged and beautiful as its landscape, shaped not only by its historical events but also by the people who came here from far and wide. Genetic studies now allow us to peel back the layers of history and discover surprising connections between Scots and ancient populations across the globe. Did you know that some Scots share DNA with tribes from as far away as Siberia? Or that the genetic footprints of North African ancestors can still be found here? Our exploration will take you from the end of the last ice age to the modern genetic landscape of Scotland, revealing how ancient hunter-gatherers, Celtic tribes, Vikings, and even Romans left their mark on the people of this land. So, buckle up as we dive into the origins and migrations that have shaped Scotland over the ages. Get ready to explore the rich genetic heritage that connects Scots to both familiar European neighbors and more distant cultures. Let's begin our fascinating voyage through the genetic history of Scotland, starting with the first human inhabitants who arrived around 12,000 years ago, and moving forward through each significant wave of migration that shaped this proud nation's people and culture. Imagine Scotland around 12,000 years ago. The last ice age is finally retreating, and with it, the ice sheets that covered much of northern Europe begin to melt. In the wake of this environmental shift, the first humans arrive in what we now call Scotland. These were the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, nomadic peoples who lived off the land, hunting animals and foraging for food. They followed the retreating ice, establishing the first human presence in the region. The world they knew was vastly different from the Scotland we recognize today, it was a wild, untamed place, full of dense forests and roaming wildlife. These early people had to adapt to survive in this harsh environment, relying on their wits and tools to hunt and gather what they needed. While these hunter-gatherers didn't leave behind massive monuments or vast cultural legacies, they did leave something just as significant, their DNA. Although their genetic contribution to modern Scots is relatively small, traces of their ancient DNA are still present today. These early pioneers may seem far removed from us now, but their influence is an important part of Scotland's genetic makeup. Their survival in such challenging conditions set the stage for future waves of migration and cultural evolution that would eventually follow. Fast forward to around 6,000 years ago, and Scotland is about to experience a major transformation. The hunter-gatherer lifestyle that had dominated for millennia gives way to something entirely new, farming. This change is not just a local innovation but part of a broader wave of migration from the Near East and Anatolia, regions far removed from Scotland geographically but deeply influential genetically. These Neolithic farmers brought with them revolutionary technologies, the domestication of animals and the cultivation of crops. Scotland's fertile landscapes provided an excellent environment for this new way of life, and over time, agriculture became the dominant form of survival. More than just tools and crops, these migrants left a significant genetic footprint that would become an integral part of Scottish DNA. Their arrival also heralded the construction of impressive monuments, like the famous Callanish stones on the Isle of Lewis and the Ring of Broger in Orkney, which are testaments to the lasting cultural influence of this era. The farmer's genetic contribution to modern Scots is far greater than that of the earlier hunter-gatherers, marking a major shift in the population's makeup. This migration didn't just change the landscape, it transformed the way people lived, setting the foundation for a more settled, agricultural society that would influence the next chapters of Scotland's genetic history. Around 4,500 years ago, a dramatic shift occurred once more in Scotland's population. This time, the newcomers were part of what archaeologists call the beaker culture, named after the distinctive bell-shaped pottery these people used. This migration is significant because it didn't just bring new cultural practices but had an enormous genetic impact on Scotland. Recent genetic studies have suggested that up to 90% of the existing Neolithic population's genetic ancestry may have been replaced by this new wave of migrants. The Beaker people likely brought with them knowledge of metallurgy, ushering Scotland into the Bronze Age with new tools, weapons, and technologies. The Beaker people's arrival didn't just mean a change in the tools people used but also a transformation in social structures, trade networks, and burial practices. They are credited with some of the earliest use of metalworking in Scotland, a skill that would become increasingly important as the Bronze Age progressed. Their genetic legacy, found in today's Scots, 
is one of the most profound transformations in the history of the British Isles. While the exact nature of their migration and how they interacted with the existing populations is still a matter of debate, it's clear that the Beaker culture was a turning point in Scotland's ancient history, leaving a lasting imprint on its people. By the time the Bronze Age gives way to the Iron Age, another group of people begins to leave their mark on Scotland, the Celts. Originating from Central Europe, the Celts were not a single people but a collection of tribal societies who shared similar languages, beliefs, and practices. Their arrival in Scotland brought with it the spread of Celtic languages and customs, which would become deeply embedded in Scottish culture for centuries to come. Celtic society was known for its strong warrior traditions, intricate art styles, and complex social structures, and these elements began to take root across Scotland, particularly in the Western Highlands. One of the most visible aspects of Celtic influence is the spread of the Gaelic language, which still persists in parts of Scotland today. In the East, Pictish culture, which may have been a branch of the Brythonic Celtic language group, dominated for several centuries. Interestingly, recent genetic studies suggest that, rather than entirely replacing earlier populations, many local groups adopted Celtic practices over time. The Celts also brought new technologies, particularly in metalworking, which became crucial for creating weapons and tools. Hill forts, new burial customs, and a deepening connection to the land all emerged during this period, creating a rich cultural foundation that would endure through the centuries, even as new waves of influence arrived. The Picts are one of the most enigmatic groups in Scotland's history, often shrouded in mystery due to the limited records left behind. These, painted people, as the Romans called them, were a confederation of tribes who lived in what is now eastern and northern Scotland during the Iron Age, around 2,800 years ago. The Picts are famous for their unique symbols, stone carvings, and their fierce resistance to Roman attempts at conquest. While their exact origins remain unclear, genetic evidence suggests that the Picts were not drastically different from other Iron Age populations in Britain. What sets the Picts apart is their cultural identity, which persisted well into the early medieval period. Their name comes from the Latin Picti, which the Romans used to describe these people who likely adorned their bodies with tattoos or war paint. The Pictish legacy is still visible in Scotland's northeast, where place names and ancient monuments reflect their influence. Despite their fame as fierce warriors and defenders of their homeland, the Picts were eventually absorbed into the larger cultural landscape of Scotland. However, recent genetic research indicates that their DNA remains a part of the Scottish genetic makeup, particularly in the northeast, even though their political power waned by the 10th century. Although the Romans never fully conquered Scotland, their presence did leave some impact on the region's people and culture. Beginning in 43 AD, the Roman Empire extended its reach into Britain, and while they built fortifications such as Hadrian's Wall and the Antonine Wall in an effort to control the northern tribes, they never managed to permanently subdue the Scots. Instead, Scotland remained a frontier territory, with only limited Roman influence. Genetic studies have revealed that while the Roman occupation of Britain did introduce Mediterranean DNA into the population, its effect on Scotland was minimal compared to other migrations. Most Roman presence was concentrated south of the Antonine Wall, and the native populations north of the Wall, including the Picts, largely retained their cultural and genetic distinctiveness. However, Roman trade and occasional military incursions did bring some Mediterranean influence to the south of Scotland. Remnants of Roman roads, fortifications, and coins found in archaeological sites tell the story of these limited interactions. The Romans may not have left a large genetic footprint in Scotland, but their brief presence was part of the complex mosaic of cultural and genetic exchanges that have shaped the nation's history. Following the collapse of the Roman Empire, another group began to make its presence felt in Scotland, the Anglo-Saxons. Originating from modern-day Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands, the Anglo-Saxons initially settled in what is now England, but their influence eventually extended northward into parts of Scotland. This period, spanning from the 5th to the 11th centuries, saw significant migration and settlement, particularly in the southern regions of Scotland, such as Lothian and the Borders. The Anglo-Saxons brought with them their own language, customs, and agricultural practices, which began to take root in these southern regions. Genetic evidence suggests that while the Anglo-Saxon genetic influence in Scotland is not as strong as in England, it is still detectable in the modern Scottish population, especially in the southeast. 
The Anglo-Saxons introduced Old English, which would later evolve into the Scots language spoken in the lowlands. Their culture was marked by the establishment of small, rural communities that were more hierarchical than the tribal systems of the Celts or Picts. However, while Anglo-Saxon influence was strong in the southern regions, it never fully penetrated the highland areas, where Gaelic culture remained dominant. This cultural divide between the Gaelic-speaking highlands and the Anglo-Saxon-influenced lowlands would continue for centuries, shaping not only the cultural but also the genetic landscape of Scotland. Even after the Viking invasions and the eventual unification of Scotland as a kingdom, the legacy of the Anglo-Saxons in southern Scotland persisted, contributing to the linguistic and genetic diversity we see in modern Scots today. From the late 8th century onwards, Scotland experienced a new wave of invasions, this time from the seafaring Norsemen, or Vikings. Originating from Scandinavia, the Vikings were notorious for their raids along the coasts of Scotland, but they were more than just pillagers, they were also settlers. Viking influence was particularly strong in the northern isles of Orkney and Shetland, where they established long-term settlements. In these regions, Norse language and culture became deeply ingrained, and genetic evidence shows that the people of Orkney and Shetland today still carry significant amounts of Norse DNA. The Vikings didn't just settle in the north, they also established bases on the west coast of Scotland and the Hebrides. This interaction led to a blending of Norse and Gaelic cultures, resulting in what is sometimes called the Norse Gael hybrid culture. Viking warriors intermarried with local populations leaving a strong genetic legacy in certain parts of Scotland, particularly in the coastal areas. In addition to their genetic contribution, the Vikings left an enduring cultural mark. Norse place names, artifacts, and even elements of Scottish law and customs can be traced back to this period. Today, the Viking legacy is celebrated in places like Orkney, where Norse influence is still a point of local pride. The early medieval period saw the gradual unification of Scotland's various peoples and kingdoms under a single ruler. This process began in the 9th century with Kenneth MacAlpin, often considered the first king of Scots, who is credited with uniting the Picts and the Gaels. The formation of a centralized kingdom didn't just have political implications, it also marked a blending of the different ethnic groups that had been living in Scotland for centuries. While the Picts, Gaels, and Norse settlers each maintained distinct identities, over time, these groups began to intermarry and share cultural practices. The genetic landscape of Scotland became even more complex as a result. By the time of the medieval Scottish kings like Malcolm III and David I, the Kingdom of Scotland was a patchwork of different ethnic groups, with influences from the Celts, Picts, Norse, and even Anglo-Saxons in the south. This period of consolidation saw the strengthening of a distinct Scottish identity, but it was an identity built on the genetic and cultural contributions of many different peoples. The formation of the kingdom laid the groundwork for the Scotland we know today, with its rich mix of influences from across Europe. The Norman conquest of England in 1066 didn't stop at the southern borders of Scotland. While the Normans didn't invade Scotland as they did England, their influence began to seep into Scottish society through diplomacy and marriage alliances. By the late 11th century, Norman nobles were invited to settle in Scotland by the Scottish kings, bringing with them new ideas about governance, architecture, and warfare. The Normans brought a feudal system that reshaped Scotland's social and political landscape. Castles sprang up across the country, and Norman barons were granted lands in exchange for their loyalty to the Scottish crown. One of the most famous Norman families to settle in Scotland was the Bruces, whose descendant Robert the Bruce would go on to become one of Scotland's most celebrated kings. Genetically, the Normans left their mark as well, though their influence was more cultural than biological. The Normans were fewer in number than earlier migratory groups, but their presence was felt most strongly in the lowlands and among the aristocracy. Norman names and family lines can still be traced in Scotland's historical record, contributing to the complex tapestry of the nation's identity. Fast forward to the present, and Scotland's genetic landscape is a fascinating mosaic that reflects thousands of years of migration, conquest, and settlement. Recent genetic studies have mapped out the distinct regional differences within Scotland, highlighting the deep genetic roots in places like the Highlands, where Norse and Gaelic influences still dominate, and the Lowlands, where Anglo-Saxon and Norman contributions are more prevalent. What's particularly remarkable is the resilience of ancient genetic markers. 
Despite centuries of invasions and migrations, traces of Scotland's earliest inhabitants, the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers and Neolithic farmers, still exist in the DNA of modern Scots. At the same time, newer influences from the Vikings, Normans, and even more recent migrations from across the British Empire have added to Scotland's genetic diversity. This rich genetic heritage not only tells the story of Scotland's past but also reflects the nation's openness to new influences and cultures. As we move forward into the future, Scotland's population will continue to evolve, but it will always carry the legacy of its complex, multi-layered history in its DNA. In conclusion, Scotland's genetic history is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of its people. From the early hunter-gatherers to the modern era, each wave of migration has contributed something unique to the nation's identity. Today, Scots are a living reflection of the diverse peoples who shaped their land, each with their own story etched into the very fabric of their DNA.